On Friday, November 18, 2022, members of No Love City, the Folk Gang, were convicted of serious crimes. As proven at trial, Folk members participated in four shootings over a two-day period. This stemmed from the snatching of a gold chain and pendant from a Folk member named Juno, also known as Big A Twirl. It happened following the filming of a music video in Brooklyn. News of the theft spread online, along with photos of the stolen necklace. In response to ridicule posted on social media about the theft, the defendants plotted retaliation against rival gang members. We covered this story right here. But now we are going to go back to 2013, where Juno was also influential, as well as other folk members. This is the time when Brooklyn was a war zone, and a lot of what we see today, obviously stems from the war we are about to speak of. We are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. At all times relevant to the conspiracies, the guys we are talking about were members or associates of a criminal street organization named Folk, No Love City. This is a subset of a larger criminal street organization known as the Folk Nation or Gangster Disciples. They also went by or affiliated with other names or groups, such as SPMB, which stood for State Paid Money Burners, and State Paid Music Business on the business side. The crew primarily operated in and around the Flatbush section of Brooklyn, in the vicinity of Flatbush Avenue, Newkirk Avenue, and Ditmas Avenue. Ever since the January 1, 2014 murder of NLC member, Malik Bola, aka Reckless, No Love City members directed their acts of violence toward rival street gang members from the Canarsie section of Brooklyn. Among the ops were members of the gangs known as 100 Clocks, HQ Monopoly, GS9, and the 1090s. Folk NLC members were involved in conspiracies to carry out armed attacks against rival gang members in Canarsie. They also conducted reconnaissance missions using vehicles and shot individuals they believed to be associated with 100 Clocks, HQ Monopoly, or other rival gang members from Canarsie, whom they referred to as the Flossie. The violence escalated as they openly discussed their intentions for more attacks and took credit for previous ones. They communicated their plans and actions through social media, mainly Facebook.com. The violence further intensified following the murder of Folk NLC member Richard James, also known as Money Bags, Phlox, and Spice, around October 14, 2015. NLC members conspired to possess, transport, and have loaded firearms and ammunition, readily available for the purpose of committing murder, attempted murders, assaults, and attempted assaults. They also planned to engage in other criminal activities like selling prison contraband and robberies to generate money for furthering their gang's criminal agenda. To evade law enforcement, Folk NLC members used a distinct system of code words and phrases, including references to firearms, to communicate covertly with each other. Grips, straps, and licks were used for drills, to catch stains, and give promos. This referred to shootings. Information from the street was relayed to the guys in jail to keep them on point. The story starts in late September of 2013, with K. Police caught K while he possessed a 40 caliber pistol on East 25th Street in Flatbush. While he was being arrested, he asked his girlfriend to take responsibility for ownership of the firearm, stating, Babe, will you take this one for me? Not sure how that turned out though. Two months later, on Christmas Day or so, in a Facebook conversation with an unknown individual, K declared himself to be the leader of the No Love City set of the Folk Nation. K wrote to the person, what you jacking? The individual responded, 74GD, No Love City under Reckless. On or about December 30, 2013, another member, Cream, in a Facebook conversation with another individual, asked for 22 caliber and 32 caliber ammunition, and stated his intent to buy a 40 caliber firearm the following day. He wrote, Yo bro, ask SK can he get me some 32 and 22 coins? Let me know because my shit done for, both. I'm about to buy a 40, tomorrow is New Year's. Shit lit. Just get them coins. The next day, Cream, in a Facebook conversation with another individual, admitted to possessing a firearm, posting a photograph of himself with a pistol in his waistband. He wrote, never lacking bro. Facts, pocket rocket season. Two days later, it's New Year's. Reckless, who was 17 at the time, was standing in a crowd of holiday partiers in front of the Barinquin Memorial Funeral Home on Bushwick Avenue near Pilling Street, when suspects drove up, got out of the car, and sprayed bullets at the teen about 3 p.m. Reckless was taken to Brookdale Hospital, where he died. 
The owner of Barinquin Memorial Funeral Home said that his business was pockmarked with bullet holes during the situation. At the party, Reckless had been involved in a fight over a girl, according to sources. Directly before he was shot, he allegedly sent out a call for help, alerting fellow gangsters that there were ops or members of opposing gangs in the area. In a rush to aid their fellow gang member, Kimi, along with Bashi and others, spin through Canarsie looking to catch somebody lacking. All of this ambition, all of these girls, I feel like a star. Tripping and pain came of a law. Only come around if it's money involved. I, I heard his man's missing. When we get to shooting, you know we don't miss. I feel like a thot, I'm all in the mix. That boy a rap, we call him a bitch. During a Facebook conversation, the NLC folk that you see in the video is Zone, Zone is his name. After the murder of Reckless, Zone had encouraged retaliation against the rival gang members from Canarsie, mentioning a belief that it was carried out by individuals associated with the Blood Ninjas from the Flossie. K also felt similar about the situation. Two days later, on or about January 3, in a Facebook message, he declared that he wanted the gang to ride out and retaliate for the death of Reckless. Something got to give boy, my little man gone. We need some more cars. Cream was also ready to go retaliate with the No Love City folk and their Bloods gang allies. He wrote messages like, I'm always writing. I don't know why y'all make it seem like I don't write out. An individual wrote, you didn't come to the Kirk to show love, but bees to G's, y'all was mobbing. Cream responded, nobody told me none about the Kirk, y'all moving sideways, keeping things to y'all self. I found out that the homie passed when y'all told me, then I started asking ninjas, and all they sayin' is that homie got into it with op, and I'm bout to find out where op stays. Shaking my effin' head. Op gotta go. He can't see no more days of 2014. He then mentions another guy named Roxoff. Roxoff getting it. That's not my man, he know not to let me find him. Me and D-Rezzy bout to handle Roxkoff. I got beef with him, and he know if I catch him, I'm a grease him. But we could knock on his door and make him come outside if he see someone he cool with. In a Facebook conversation with an unknown individual, Prem announced his intent to align with the Folk Nation No Love City Gang and their goal of retaliating with violence against rival gang members from Canarsie, writing, Never was I a flossy nigga. From the conversations, it seems like Prem had some prior dealings with the flossy. From this point, crew members such as Bashi talked about acquiring firearms for the get back. The Flossie was talking hot. On or about February 4, 2014, Prem, in a Facebook conversation, called for a meeting of Folk Nation gang members and Bloods gang members to organize an attack on the Flossie. Bro, we need to have a B's to G's meeting ASAP. That same day, we mobbing on the Flossie. On or about February 9, 2014, in the vicinity of Flatlands Avenue and East 82nd Street, Zone, while acting with others, jumped out of the passenger side of a vehicle and shot a rival gang member multiple times at close range, striking the rival gang member in the back and left arm. Things start to ramp up from this point. Anyone affiliated with the Flossie was a target, but Rockoff was the top op. On or about March 13, 2014, Denz, in a Facebook conversation with Kay, admitted to working to get close to Rockoff so he could kill him. Kay asked, yo, why you talking to Rockoff? Denz responded, I'm rocking boy to sleep, just calm big boss. So where he at? Kay asked. I ain't say much to boy, I ain't even reply to son, so I wouldn't know geez. But you wilding bro, I'm rocking boy to sleep. I want the prize. If you remember the sex money murder video, we mentioned the term, rock to sleep. This was putting someone under the impression that you're cool with them before they are killed or whatnot. On or about March 22, 2014, Kimi, in a telephone conversation with another person, Monty, said he chased after a rival gang member from Canarsie in or near the courthouse in Brooklyn, stating, I pulled up to your court last time, but I came late. Rockoff was there. My ninja, we chased him on the court. Ninja called Mad Flossy Ninjas. Me and Prince was wilding downtown. You feel me? Three days later, K would express his disappointment. He chastised Denz for not putting in work and said that only him, Zone, Shaw Murda, Bills, and Rich Money, who also went by Rich Flocks, were spinning the floss. Y'all ninjas ain't popping out, K said. Zone, me, Shaw, Bills, and Rich, only ninjas that burn up some shit in the floss. The all ninjas get a gun in y'all hand and hop straight in Facebook before you put in work. What the f you doing? At some point, Denz responds. At the end of the day. I'm too much of a real ninja to even smile with the ops. 
I bro, so say that. Tomorrow, I'm a link. We gonna chop it up. Ain't no ops with the folks, I promise you. I'm with a gang, so more or less, I don't know about y'all, but it's 5 to 7 ops I'm rocking to sleep. On March 20th, 2020, Zone and Brown, aka Chico De Niro. It was a problem. It was a problem. They do not want the blickies in the industry. We are a problem. I believe it's a problem. They do not want the twirlers in the industry. We are a problem. We are a problem. They ain't never were involved in the shooting of a victim who was disrespectful toward their gang. An individual with a victim threw a drink at a woman inside the Gold Room restaurant and lounge in Prospect Lefferts Gardens, splashing a person standing with Brown. An argument ensued, and the victim, a Crips gang member, flashed a gang sign known as Dropping the Rake, a gesture intended to be insulting to the folk nation. The argument continued outside the bar where Brown allegedly displayed a gun and fired a shot into the air. Brown then handed the gun to Zone who walked behind the victim and shot him in the buttocks at close range. Zone fled and discarded the gun a half block away. The gun was recovered by law enforcement, and DNA from both defendants was found on the weapon. For the next weeks, Denz went about getting ammo, and talked of his readiness to spin the flossy. However, according to the indictment, he would get shot at before he could do something. On or about April 16, 2014, Denz and Bashi got shot at because Denz flashed a folk hand signal. The following day, after the attempt on his life, he told someone in a message, I'm Gucci bro, I'm strapped right now, full clip. Bashi wanted to obtain a vehicle in order to go spin the flossy, but it might not have came to fruition, according to the indictment. On or about May 24, 2014, at approximately 10.45 a.m., in the vicinity of East 105th Street and Flatland 2nd Street, another NLC member, Rome, possessed a loaded gun. He repeatedly discharged a firearm at a 2010 Nissan Maxima, striking the vehicle with a barrage of bullets. Rome was on HOTS. Two days later, he talked of his intention to fire multiple shots into a crowd of people at a party held that night in rival gang territory. We gotta make sure somebody get touched tonight, no leg shots data. Facts, it's gonna be mad shells. This is a big stain tonight. No missing data. Dada was another name that Rome went by, short for Dadarachi. And we mentioned him as Dada in our GS9 story as well. Rome had a plan to get the ops though. He wrote to others, saying he was gonna use a female to identify targets at the party, which was going down in the flossy. We need some low-key chicks who know who they is, so they could tell exactly when they see them. That night, Rome, likely with others, spinned to the vicinity of Avenue M and East 96th Street. At approximately 10.15 p.m., Rome fired multiple shots into a crowd of people, striking Justin Johnson, aka Cutta, and two females with bullets. He later admitted it in a Facebook group, writing, shut down barbecues at 10.30 and all that. He also said, give my son that 380 and let him out in the 100 clocks. This meant, give someone the 380 caliber pistol, spin to the territory of the 100 clocks, and try to kill someone. Same day, Denz admitted to someone that he had backed down two people on his block, Juggy and Junes. The following day, another member, Stax, had a gun while in the vicinity of Ditmas Avenue and Flatbush Avenue. At approximately 8.30 p.m., Stax and a rival gang member got into a shootout. Instead of hitting his target, it was said that Stax hit 60-year-old Deletta Crawford, who was grocery shopping on Flatbush Avenue. One of the stray bullets ripped through her midsection, damaging her liver and spleen, and shattering her vertebrae. She was permanently paralyzed from the waist down. Stax was arrested four days later for the shooting, and was sent to Rikers Island. The woman felt nothing in her legs but random nerve pain, yet she remained optimistic. I still hope one day my legs can move, she said. That's why I'm exercising. I hope one day I can feel something in them. This was almost 10 years ago, so not sure how things turned out for her, hopefully for the better. Around June 8, 2014, Rome was talking crazy in his convos with the ops. I've been circling your block. Ask your man who almost got left with his shoddy in the V right by your crib. They was in the jeep. I done seen ninjas duff you and send you home, your ass. I made the floss hot, I caught Kata though. He further admitted to more things, writing, why you wasn't at the barbecue. I was looking for you man, where you was at, I ain't see you. Y'all mad Kata got shot and y'all ain't in the fields. I'm staining y'all every time I see y'all. So what happened to Kata's back? I came back for the barbecue, but I ended it at 10.30.
there was more spicy talk. In a Facebook conversation with another rival gang member, he talked of the shooting at the individual in the white Nissan Maxima that happened two days before the party shooting. So what happened to your man ex white Max? He ain't tell you how he got shelled down on flat too. Then, he issued a threat to the 100 Clocks gang by posting a photograph of three semi-automatic handguns, each with extended ammunition magazines, and writing, ready for Clocks. On or about June 17, 2014, Rome and another NLC member, Delhi, spinned the flossy. In the vicinity of 1010 East 105th Street, they shot a rival gang member multiple times at close range. First, they started shooting from within a vehicle, but then they got out on foot in an attempt to finish off their prey. However, they were unsuccessful, it wasn't the op's time to die. Not to confuse you all, but remember Rasha. I'm with Triga, I'm with Rasha, I'm with Arod, broad daylight, and we gun let them things bark. Well, according to the GS9 indictment, two days prior to this, on June 15th, Rasha and other GS9 guys such as Arod had ran into a hostile situation with the No Love City folk gang. Shots were fired, and a No Love City member was hit. On or about July 2nd, the ops decided to spin on No Love City. That day, NLC member, Scope, reported to his brother, Stax, that he and another member, Ashane, were shot on East 25th Street by rival gang members. He stated, some ninjas that tried to pull up on the block. They shot up the block, and Ashane got clapped too. Me too, on my leg. At the time, Stax was being held on bail for shooting and paralyzing the woman. He told Scope to ask their fellow gang members to help raise bail money, stating, ask niggas to put up $300 each man. In the same convo, Scope told Stax that Kay was calling for the folk No Love City gang members to retaliate. Kay and them want to go promote. They've been promoting. Remember, in this story, promoting means shooting. A few days later, Bills identified to Stax, who had shot Stax's brother, Scope. He stated, you don't know them. They from the 90s, like the GSC 90s, the 90s and church. This would be the area where GS9 congregated. At some point around this time, K would get locked up. On or about July 23, 2014, K issued a directive to his female associate to pass on instructions to the gang, including Ra Kim, he wanted him to intimidate potential witnesses from testifying in a grand jury. K specifically instructed them to target two individuals, Khalid and Bred, and warned them to make sure these individuals didn't come forward to testify. He said, tell Ra Kim to run down on Khalid and Bred. Tell them, to tell them don't come to grand jury. Tell him when he sees them ninjas, beat them ninjas up. Tell them they got the big homie locked. K is most likely referring to Kimi as the person he wanted to run down on Khalid and Bred, because Kimi also used the name Ra Kim. The events that followed involved several gang members carrying out violent acts on K's orders. On July 24, 2014, K reprimanded Juno for not being violent enough and demanded that he and other gang members attack an individual named Oze, slashing his face. Beat these ninjas up. Give this ninja Oze a buck fifty on his fat face. Are you serious? The all ninjas not evil. Three days later, K discussed with Juno potential candidates to hold on to K's firearm. He asked, what y'all doing with my flock? To which Juno replied, I gotta find somebody to hold it. On the same date, in another phone conversation, K told him to retrieve his firearm from fellow gang member, Paolo. Make sure you get my stuff from Paolo, make sure you get everything, the clip, everything. Also the same day, on July 27, 2014, in a telephone conversation, Bills told K that he had concealed a firearm on his person during arraignments after being arrested. K asked, Cannon. And Bills responded, yeah, you know how I move. Everything through the whole process. Judge to judge, crazy stuff. Wasn't really much to talk about for a few months. By November 10, 2014, NLC member, Thai General, received screenshots of a Facebook conversation between an unknown female and a rival gang member, arranging to meet up in person. On the same date, Ty and his brother, Shaq, also known as KK, planned the baiting and shooting of a random rival gang member through a Facebook conversation. Ty wrote, yo, help me out, give me a fake address out there that I could send the op ninja. KK responded, we don't got shells yet for you to do that, I only got one. Ty responded head tap. This most likely meant that they only needed one shell if they could get a headshot. They came up with a fake address to line the op. 
Two days later, in the vicinity of East 92nd Street and K Avenue, Ty and KK shot a rival gang member in the face at point-blank range, causing the victim to suffer a broken jaw. There was nothing of much significance to talk of until five months later. On April 17, 2015, Ashane, who had gotten shot on an earlier occasion with Scope, shot an individual in front of 2574 Bedford Avenue in Brooklyn. On the same date, in an attempt to avoid detection, Ashane stashed the firearm he had just used to shoot the individual. A week later, Kay told Paolo that he had a maintenance worker at Rikers Island, who helped him smuggle contraband into the facility, including marijuana, tobacco, and synthetic marijuana. I got the worker that worked downstairs. I just throw whatever I want in the garbage, in a chip bag, and tell him what chip bag it is, and he bring it up for me, mad weed, mad backhoe, mad K2. At this point, he was getting money in Rikers. On or about May 22, 2015, in a telephone conversation, Ty General admitted to a female caller that he used firearms, stating, you know how I ride, I was shooting at ninjas. He also said he possessed and sold firearms. The same day, he admitted to his mother that he possessed firearms, and that in the past, he had other people take responsibility for firearms he possessed, stating, I said he should take it. All the guns were mine. Other niggas took charges for me before. So what? By June, K, while still incarcerated, asked Juno to check if the surgical steel blades that Juno planned to smuggle to him in a correctional facility would trigger metal detectors. You gotta Google and tell me what's the difference. I don't want this bitch coming, and shit starts ringing off old crazy. On the same date, he informed Juno that he had saved $3,000 from selling smuggled contraband and requested more consistent efforts in bagging the contraband. Toward the end of June, K demanded that Paolo pay him a percentage of proceeds from a robbery as tribute for K being the big homie. He told Juno, call Paolo and tell him he gonna have to send me up some cheese on that. What he think life about? Gotta send the big homie some bread, son. I want 10%, I certified his name in the streets. At about 2.30 a.m., on the morning of Monday, July 13, Harold Abodia, who lived on Foster Avenue, by East 3rd Street, was shot in the head and hand. He was pronounced dead. Harold was affiliated with the No Love City folk. Niggs, who lived on Beaverly Road, was arrested for the murder almost three weeks later. Approaching mid-July, another NLC affiliate, Fresh, went on a drill in rival territory, the area harbored by the Rugby Road Bloods. It was believed that the Rugby Road Bloods were responsible for killing Harold. On July 13, 2015, Fresh entered a courtyard at 866 Coney Island Avenue filled with people, including children playing on scooters, and opened fire, striking two innocent bystanders and narrowly missing two others. Before firing, Roberts allegedly declared his presence by announcing, I'm Fresh, Corey is my name, from Ditmas, Newkirk. The kids scattered, but a 50-year-old man was shot and a woman was shot at. Fresh then fled on a bicycle. A day later, Kay asked Juno, who was putting in work. Juno replied, none of these ninjas, just Ashane. Fresh went over there talking about how he hit two people. You know ninjas be talking. Ain't nobody get hit, it's like we holding down they fort. They spoke of Kay's gun similar to last time. Tell Paolo hold my ladder for my glizzy, I need my ladder, bro, my extend. Tell him don't let nothing happen to my clip. I am going to get another one soon. This same day, Juno also had a convo with Stax, who was still incarcerated. He informed him that a fellow gang member had been killed by Rugby Road Bloods gang members, responding to, Stax statement, they don't even know who did it, right? With, Rugby, bro. Stack said to Juno that anybody from Rugby Road should be shot and that Ashane would have to take care of that. Side note. The indictment for guys from Van Dyke was also announced this day, July 14, 2015. The following day, Ashane would spin on the alleged rivals that killed their homie. On Newkirk Avenue, approximately three blocks from Rugby Road, Ashane shot Adetundi Ahake multiple times at close range, killing him. Ahake went by the street name, Smoke. According to police, Ahake was sitting with a woman in a black BMW sedan at the corner of Newkirk and East 17th when a white sedan rolled up around 12.49 a.m. and opened fire, hitting the 25-year-old in the chest, eye, arm, and back. Ahake was brought to Kings County Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The woman was not hurt. 
Hahake was arrested on July 6 days prior on robbery and menacing charges and was released on bail from Rikers the day before he died. He had been arrested nearly two dozen times. We want to talk of a murder that took place. We are not sure that it was ever solved. In late August of 2015, three men were shot, one fatally. The gunman opened fire in front of the Pac Plex Recreation Center at Perdigot Avenue North and Perdigot 13th Street in Canarsie. Justin Johnson was shot six times, falling in the street where he was accidentally run over by a car, a police source said. He died at the scene. Johnson, who was likely the intended target of the shooting, had a history of arrests related to guns, drugs and robbery. Justin Johnson went by the name, Cutta. This is the same guy that Rome had shot in the back at the party. Cutta had multiple ops, and as we stated, don't know if his murder was ever solved. Around mid-October, No Love City lost one of their members. Strangely enough, it happened all the way on the other side, the West Coast. Richard James, a 23-year-old black man, tragically lost his life when he was shot in the 8400 block of Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. The incident occurred while he was standing with a group of people on the patio outside the comedy store. A black male wearing a hooded sweatshirt started shooting, and at least six shots were fired. James was hit in the upper torso and succumbed to his injuries at a local hospital. This was a rare event to take place on Sunset Boulevard. Four days later, a situation would take place, retaliation for this situation. So, we did a story on GS9, and we mentioned another crew called BMW, Brooklyn's Most Wanted. The Beamers, or BMW, had a notable presence in areas like Flatbush, East Flatbush, The Flossie, Crown Heights, and Mill Basin, with sets such as 7 Tray, 718, 269, and 730. There was an incident on Labor Day in 2011 at a backyard party where BMW was allegedly responsible for Scheiss's death, a well-known crip. This caused a conflict between the 50s and 90s. Before this event, they used to be close. Bobby and Rowdy were once associated with BMW and was frequently seen with the 50s. Some older YouTube videos depicted their involvement with BMW in the past, but might be hard to find now. We have to do a story on these guys. Allegedly, back in the 90s, guys like Psych Bike, Earl, Rumble, Homicide just to name a few, were the original BMW. Some say BMW were Crips, but turned bloods. We only mention BMW because they were targets of this next situation at the hands of the folks who they were also once cool with. So, on or about October 18, 2015, a dramatic incident unfolded during the filming of rapper Meek Mill's Lord Knows music video for the movie, Creed. It was a chilly day in October when the crew gathered at a gym in Dumbo to shoot the video. Unbeknownst to the production team, word had spread among the members of No Love City that some rivals from a different gang would be present at the shooting location. No Love City members, Juno, Bills and Shaw Murder, armed and ready, decided to seize this opportunity to settle their score. As the cameras rolled and the director shouted action, tension brewed outside the gym. The rival gang members arrived, and before anyone could comprehend the situation, a hail of gunfire erupted. Chaos engulfed the once peaceful streets of Dumbo, as the rival gangs engaged in a fierce and dangerous shootout. Brooklyn District Attorney Ken Thompson later described the scene to reporters, recounting how the confrontation escalated into an all-out gun battle. The sound of gunfire echoed through the narrow streets, startling the passers-by and turning the bustling neighborhood into a war zone. Bullets flew in every direction as the two gangs exchanged fire more than 10 times. Some gang members were caught in the crossfire and suffered injuries. The No Love City members, after unleashing their fury, made a hasty retreat. Racing through the labyrinthine streets of Brooklyn, they drove at breakneck speed. The police were hot on their trail, but the gang members were determined not to be caught. In their frantic escape, they passed through the neighborhoods of Park Slope and Carroll Gardens, with the sound of police sirens growing louder behind them. Eventually, they reached Bergen Street, where they decided to abandon their bullet-riddled car. With guns in hand, they flung them out the window, hoping to dispose of the evidence that could link them to the violent confrontation. However, their bullet-riddled vehicle, a 2013 Cadillac, left behind ballistics evidence, DNA evidence and fingerprint evidence. Juno and Bill sought medical attention for another person's gunshot wounds at Kings County. Bills had gotten shot as well, and documents state that his blood was found in the vehicle. 
If you don't know, Bills had been paralyzed since 2012, after he was shot through the window of a residence. Some say it was a trap house. We are mentioning this now because some of you didn't know when he became paralyzed, and it is something that makes his story more interesting. Moving along though. That day, Shaw Murder reported to Kay that he had acted as a decoy to the police, in order to help his fellow folk NLC members avoid cops, as they fled from the Dumbo shooting. He stated, when I saw that the D's was watching, I turned back around and put the goods back in the V, closed the door, and told them drive off, and they drove off, and then I ran to the D's. So now they all jumping on me, stopping me, questioning me, oh, what's up, you drunk? What's up with your friend? You drunk? You driving? The cops asked. Because they don't know we promo. They just seen us flying by. So they started chasing ninjas. I'm like yeah man, that ninja drunk man. I'm taking a cab home, eff it. So by the time then, Bill's already gone bro. They guys got away from the police on this occasion. Things didn't work out like this two months later. On or about December 30th, 2015, Kimi, also known as Ra Kim, was in possession of a firearm with a magazine capable of holding 30 rounds of ammunition. He fled from the police during a routine traffic stop, leading them on a high-speed chase. The chase ended with the Kimi striking three separate vehicles and fleeing the scene of the accident on foot. Not sure when he was apprehended. What we can say though, is by 2016, all these guys were locked up and hit with RICO charges. Watch this video to see what happens after this timeline. Some of the guys came home and got right back to it. For instance, Kay committed a shooting in Brooklyn on March 22, 2022. It was alleged he shot into a crowd of people on the block of East 21st Street between Ditmas Avenue and Dorchester Road, shortly after 9.30 p.m. that night. In a rap video by his own call twirl story, he talked about fellow members doing bad. He said Kimi wrote a statement, but he is acting like he didn't. He also mentioned that Rome switched sides. But this about wraps this one up, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.